Hello, baseball fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today I'm here with Back to Basics Baseball. And for today's game, we're going to go way back in the day. We're going to go back, way back, in the Wayback Machine with Mr. Peabody. And we're going to do the 1919 Cleveland Indians at the 1919 Chicago White Sox. Or, as they were more commonly known, the Black Sox. So, uh, today's pitching matchup for the Indians will be Jim Bagby. And for the White Sox, it will be Eddie Seacott. So, let's, uh, let's just take a look at the... Cleveland lineup and pitcher right there. You can see uh, Cleveland's going to start off with Wombings Gas. I don't know how to pronounce that name. Ray Chapman before um, he was killed by Carl Mays. Tris Speaker in center field. Elmer Smith at right field. Larry Gardner at third. Steve O'Neill catching. Uh, Graney in left field, Doc Johnston at first, and then, of course, Bagby batting um, in the ninth spot as the pitcher. For the White Sox, you can see there, right here, there's their lineup. They're going to have Eddie Collins at second base, Chick Gandle at first, Shoeless Joe Jackson in left field, Happy Felsch in center, Buck Weaver at third, Nemo Liebold in right, Risberg at shortstop, Ray Schalk catching, and Eddie Seacott, the knuckleballer, will be the pitcher today. Now, something you're going to notice, um, and I did as I was filling this sheet out, um, is that um, you almost everybody fielding for errors is an F or, um, or a D. There are the occasional B and A and whatever, but you can see it's mostly F and D. And that's how it was back in the day. I mean, everybody made errors. The only thing that I would question about how they made the game was, uh, wouldn't you make the errors uh, relative to the era? And if you did that, wouldn't the players be better at... Um, like, you know, like if the typical number of errors for a shortstop was like, say, um, I, per year was like 80, then if a guy had 75, yeah, in the history of baseball, that wouldn't be good. But for that time era, it probably would be. But anyway, I digress. Um, we are going to... Um, we are not going to uh, belabor that point. And uh, so what we're going to do here is you can see here's the deck of cards. This is the uh, fact deck. And again, this is back to basics baseball. There are no uh, player cards with this. You just go off the, um, you know, the scorecard with all of the ratings written in it. And then you, um, you know, you, you go accordingly from there. So, and I want to point out that I'm going to be putting the discards here. These are the... This is the pile when I start it that I'm going to be reading off of, not what happens here. Like right now, whatever you're seeing right here, this is not the result. The result's going to be when I flip the card and put it in the discard. So um, with all of that having been said and gotten out of the way, we're going to start off with Wombin's Gas batting against... Eddie Collins, um, I want to mention that um, Seacott is an A pitcher and Bagby is a C pitcher. So you've got Wambins Gas, who is a, an, um, a B batter going up against an A pitcher. So you look in the top first, and uh, you know I'll just bring this up here, and you can see the pitcher is an A, so that is a swing, and then you look down in the in the batter section on B plus, which is what, or B, which is what Wombin Gas is. And that is a ground out to second base with a possible um, range check. And so we'll flip another card for the range check. And this is a range check. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, the range check is a... Uh, 
What was that? Let's see. It was a range check at second. So the second baseman for the White Sox is a range A. And so you can see on a range A, he is out. So that's one down. The next batter is Chapman. And Chapman is an A, uh, or is an, an A batter against an A pitcher. You look up here on the A pitcher, it's a swing. You look at the A batter, and it's a pop out to second base. So there's two down. The next batter is Tris Speaker. He is a B-plus batter against an A pitcher. A pitcher gets a swing, um, and a B-plus gets a home run if he's an A at home run, which he isn't. So otherwise, it's a double. So we have, uh, we have a man at second. Let's get him up there at second base. And um, so that's a double for Speaker. And then you got Elmer Smith. Elmer Smith is a... B batter, so you got it. The A pitcher gets a swing, and the B batter gets uh, a home run if he's a C plus, which he is not. Otherwise, it's a double, and it's a run scoring double, and a run comes in in the form of Tris Speaker. The next batter is Larry Gardner. He is a B plus batter, so you got the A pitcher gets a strikeout if. Um, he is an A, B, C, or D at striking uh, players out. And he actually um, is an F. So he isn't. So that means we flip another card and we refer to the out section. And you can see the out section says fielder's choice. So he is out. And Cleveland gets one run. In the first, we go to the bottom of the first. Eddie Collins is the first batter. He is a batter A against a C pitcher. So you go up and you look at the top. The C pitcher is a swing, and an A batter is going to be a home run if he's a B-plus home run, and he is not. Um, and that's another thing you're going to find with the 1919 set is that there aren't guys with big home run ratings. Again, should they have made the home run ratings relative to the era, or should they have just made them overall baseball, which is what they seemed like they did? Um, that's a question for other people to decide. But anyway, he is not a home run B+, plus, so that is going to be a deep fly to right field. So that's an F9. Chick Gandle is the next batter. Chick Gandle is a B-plus batter against a C pitcher. C pitcher gets a swing, and a B-plus batter gets an injury possibility. So we're going to pick the card and look at the injury. And uh, injury says... Um, injury rating is... Um, i got to look on the other chart for this. A... Chick Gandle is an injury A. And so you can see it says injury A is no. So he's not injured and he is out. And, uh, or no, we pick another card to see, to resolve that. So you got a C pitcher with a swing and a B plus batter. And that's going to be a single. So actually he gets a single. I had the wrong thing written down. And then that brings up Shoeless Joe Jackson. Shoeless Joe Jackson is an A-plus batter, as you might well imagine. And the pitcher is a C. That's a swing. And an A-plus is a home run. If he's a C-plus at home run, he is not. Otherwise, it's a double three bases. So you've got a double, a run scoring double, and the White Sox have tied the game. Got Felsch up. Felsch is a C plus batter against a C pitcher. You've got a swing, and a C plus is a ground out to first base. And uh, with the ground out, that moves the runner to third. We'll just kind of put him up over here to denote, denote that he's at third. In fact, actually, we can put the discard pile off, to, or the uh, originating pile off to the side. So um, we've got a runner at uh, third, 
in Buck Weaver. Buck Weaver is a batter B+. Plus. So you've got a C swing from the pitcher and a B+, plus, which is a strikeout if um, the uh, batter is a B, C, D, or F at striking out. And he actually is not, but all that means is that we refer to the out section. And if you pick another card, you um, refer to the out section as double play, but really it's a, just an out. Um, and the White Sox tie the game at one. We go to the top of the second. Top of the second, you have Steve O'Neill up. Steve O'Neill is a batter B plus and going against an A pitcher. So an A pitcher gets a ground out to the pitcher with a possible error check. Um, and he is an error B. And so we'll pick another card and refer to the error section B. And you see he is out. So that is going to be a one to three. O'Neill goes one to three. And you got Grainy up. I really hate doing this without cards, I gotta say. Grainy is a uh, D batter against an A pitcher. An A pitcher gets a ground out to first base. So that's just going to be a ground out three. And then you've got Doc Johnston. And he is a batter A against an A pitcher. And the A pitcher gets to fly out to right field. So that's going to be an F9. And Cleveland gets nothing in the second. We go to the bottom of the second. Bottom of the second, you got Nemo Liebold. Nemo Liebold is an A batter against a C pitcher. The C pitcher gets a fly out to center field. So we don't do anything else. It is an F8. Next up, Swede Riseberg and Risberg, Riseberg, however you pronounce his name. He's a C batter against a C pitcher. That's a fly out to right. So that's going to be an F9. And that brings up Ray Schalk, the catcher. Uh, C uh, pitcher gets the swing, and um, Schalk is a B batter, and a B batter gets a walk if he's an A, B, C, or D at walking, and he is. So that is a walk. Which brings up Seacott, who is not a good hitter. He is actually, well, and, uh, wait a minute. No, he is an F. He's an F batter. So you got a C pitcher with a swing and an F batter gets a ground out to third base with a possible range check. And uh, let's see, what was that? Third base? The third baseman for the Indians is an A range. So we'll pick it. We'll look at the range and it is an out. The one thing I do like uh, that I really do like about uh, back to basics baseball, there's no charts. Everything, everything is on the cards, 100%. So anyway, he is out and no runs come in for the White Sox. We go to the top of the third. In the top of the third, you got Jim Bagby, the pitcher, leading off. Uh, that is an A pitcher, and an A pitcher gets a, a ground out with a range check at, uh, is, yes, is it a range? Yeah, range check at shortstop. And uh, Schalk is a range F. And so we'll pick another card and we'll go to range F. And that's going to be an out. If he'd been a D, it, ironically, if he'd been better, a little better, and, and been a D, it would have allowed a single. But it's really an out. So that's going to be a 6-3. to three. And then we go to Wombenskas. And again, he is a batter B. So you got an A pitcher get, allows a swing, and a batter B gets a home run if he's an A, which he is not. So it's a deep fly to center field, and it is an F9. And then that brings up Ray the Chapman before he got hit by Carl Mays in the head. And that is going to be a short fly to left field, and that is going to be an F7. And it's an out, and we go to the bottom of the third. Bottom of the third, you have the top of the lineup, Eddie Collins, the intelligent one, the college-educated one, which was rare in 1919, and against the C batter, or pitcher, he gets a swing, and he is a, um, a batter, and an A batter gets a ground out to first base, so that's going to be a ground out three. You've got Chick Gandle, Chick Gandle is a B-plus batter 
against a C pitcher. That's a swing and a B plus is a strikeout if he is a strikeout C, D, or F. And let's see if he is. He is not. So we're going to refer to the out section, which really is all that's going to happen there. And uh, in the out section, you can see he gets a double play. So he hits into a double play, but really what it is is just an out. Um, and I believe that that is... No, that's no. That's a second out. And then uh, Shoeless Joe Jackson. And he is an A-plus batter against a C pitcher. C pitcher allows a swing and an A-plus gets a single. So Shoeless Joe is aboard with a hit. Bringing up Happy Felsh. Happy Felsh is a C plus batter. C pitcher allows a swing. C plus batter gets a fly out to center. So that is going to be an F8. No runs come in for the White Sox. We go to the top of the fourth in a 1 1 game, if you knew that anyway. Uh, it's But he's going to get a ground out to first base with a range check without having to refer to the pitcher card or the batter card. And the range of uh, Gandal at first is a B. So we'll pick the next card and we'll look at the range section. And uh, that is a single. So he allowed a single. There's the batter right there. Um, so let's put the single for Tris Speaker. Elmer Smith is up. Elmer Smith is a uh, batter B. A pitcher allows a fly out to center field, though. So that is going to be one out. Uh, Gardner, Larry Gardner comes up. He is a B-plus batter against the A pitcher. That's a deep fly to right, though, and so that's two outs. And Steve O'Neill is up. Steve O'Neill is a batter um, B+. Plus. A pitcher allows a walk if his walk rating is an F, which I would tend to doubt it is. Um, it isn't. So it's going to be an out, and we'll refer to the out section of the next card. And that says um, AD, which... Um, I'm not sure what AD is. AD is a ground out all runners advance one base. So, um, but that would have been the third out, I believe. So, no need to concern ourselves with that. The uh, Indians got no runs in the fourth. Neaten these up a little bit. And so you go to the bottom of the fourth with Buck Weaver up. And Buck Weaver is a B-plus batter against a C pitcher. He gets a swing and a B-plus. He gets a home run if he's a B, which he isn't. So it's a deep fly to right, one away. Nemo Liebold is up. And Nemo Liebold is an A batter. Against a C pitcher, he gets a swing, and an A batter gets a home run if he's a C plus. Um, he is not at home runs, so he isn't, and uh, therefore he gets um, a double. So Liebold with a double, a one-out double, brings up Risberg, who is a C, Risberg. A C pitcher allows a swing. A C guy there allows a possible um, ground out with an air possible error at shortstop. The shortstop air rating is an F, and so we will pick the next card and look at the air F. And air F says out. So he is an it, it is an out, and it's an A D, which means all runners advance one base. So that is an out with the runner going to third. And then Ray Schalk is up. Ray Schalk is a, uh, a batter B. And uh, against a C pitcher, he gets a swing and a, a batter. What is he? A B? Yeah. B gets a strikeout if he's a B, C, D, or F at striking out. And uh, he is. So that is going to be a strikeout.
for Jim Bagby. First of the game, it's the first strikeout by any batter, and no runs come in in the fourth. We go to the top of the fifth. Top of the fifth, and you've got um, Grainy up. Grainy is a batter D against an A pitcher. But that's a strikeout if he's an A, B, or C at striking batters out. And he is not. So we're going to refer to the out section. And the out section says that it's a fielder's choice. So it is an out. Um, and so that's one out. Grainy gone to lead off the fifth. You got Doc Johnston. Doc Johnston is an A batter against an A pitcher. And he gets a strikeout if he's an A at striking people out. And he isn't. So we're going to look at the out section. And that is going to be um, a... Uh, a double play looks like and um, that's an out and there wouldn't have been a double play because there wasn't one in in um, uh, in play on that and Jim Bagby is the batter Jim Bagby is a C batter it's an A pitcher but an A pitcher just strikes him out and that's the second strikeout of the game first for Seacott the Indians get no runs in the fifth. We go to the bottom of the fifth, and that's going to bring up Seacott, who is a bad batter. He is a, an F batter, and a C pitcher allows a swing, and an F batter gets a ground out to third base. So he is out. Bringing up Eddie Collins, good hitter. Uh, he is actually a batter A, so... A C pitcher gets a swing, and an A batter gets a ground out to third base with a range check. The third baseman's range is A, so we'll look at the range on the next card, and that is an out. So that's five to three, and up steps Chick Gandal. Chick Gandal uh, against a C pitcher gets a line out to first base. And that brings in no runs for the White Sox in a 1-1 game. You can see right here, here's the score, here's the scoreboard. 1-1 as we go to the top of the sixth. And in the top of the sixth, you've got Wombins Gas again, the guy whose name I can't pronounce. Um, against an A pitcher, he gets a swing, and he is a batter B, and he gets a line out to first base. One down, and Chapman is up. Chapman, against an A pitcher, gets a swing, and he is an A batter, and he gets a strikeout if uh, the pitcher is a B, C, D, or F. Or if he's a, a B, C, D, or F. Is it if he's a B, C, D, or F? I think it's if he's a B, C, D, or F. It's striking out. Um, and he is... Um, a C, so it is a strikeout. And uh, Tris Speaker is going to be the batter. Tris Speaker, a B-plus batter against an A pitcher. A gets a swing, B-plus gets a ground out to first base. And uh, the Indians go one, two, three, right there. We go to the bottom of the sixth. The bottom of the sixth, you've got Shoeless Joe Jackson up. And he is a batter A plus against a C pitcher. C pitcher gets a strikeout, though. Shoeless Joe going down on the K. And that brings up Happy Felsh. Happy Felsh is a C plus batter. Against the C pitcher, but the C pitcher just whiffs him. Two whiffs here for Bagby. All of a sudden, he wants to strike people out. Weaver is a B plus batter against the C pitcher, and he gets a strikeout if he's an A pitcher at striking out uh, batters, but he is not. So we will look at the out range on the next card, and that is going to be a, uh, it would have been a double play, but really it's just an out. And so. <clears throat> 
uh, the uh, the White Sox go down there, and we're still in a one-one game. Both teams scored in the first, the very first inning, and you thought maybe you got a barn burner here, but since then it's been nothing by any team. The Indians will be up in the top of the seventh, and they're going to bring up Elmer Smith. Elmer Smith is a B batter against an A pitcher, and that's going to be a fly. The A pitcher just allows the fly out to center field. No chance to look at Elmer Smith, so that's going to be an F8. Larry Gardner is up. Uh, he is a B-plus batter against an A pitcher, but he gets a deep fly to center field with no chance to check his batting card. And O'Neill is a B-plus batter against the A pitcher, and that is a walk if he's a deer and an F at walking people. And he is actually not. So we're going to look at the uh, outside. I mean, we really don't need to refer to the out section. It's a fielder's choice, but really it's an out because we know it's an out. It's just an out other than a strikeout with nobody on and, the, and two outs already. So we see the Indians get nothing in the seventh. And in the bottom of the seventh, we're going to lead off. The White Sox will lead off with Lee Bold. And Lee Bold going up against the C pitcher is a walk if he's a B, C, D, or F at walking people. And he isn't. He is actually an A at walking people, so that will be an out, and we're just going to say he's an out because there's nobody on and it doesn't matter. Um, it's just that we know it's not a strikeout. Uh, Risberg comes up. He is a batter C. And uh, against a C pitcher, he does get a swing, and a C batter gets a line out to second base. Line out to four. Nobody can get anything going here. Shulk steps up. Shulk against a... Uh, he Shulk is a uh, B batter. Yeah, he is a B batter against a C pitcher. He gets a swing, and the B batter gets a walk if he's an A, B, or C at walking. And uh, he is. So that is a walk. The White Sox have another guy on base. This has been a real uh, pitching duel here. C caught up. He's a terrible hitter. He's an F hitter, but we're going to let him hit because it's a 1-1 game. Back in the day when everybody pitched a complete game, that is going to be a swing, and the F batter is going to get a ground out to third base. And that is the third out, so we don't need to determine what kind of an out. And we go to the top of the eighth inning. Top of the eighth, Jack Graney is going to be the batter. Jack Graney against an A pitcher just gets a strikeout. Jack Graney just going down on the K by uh, the knuckleballing C cot. Doc Johnston, who is an uh, A batter, so you've got a C or an A strike or a strikeout. The pitcher strikes him out. And so Seacott's doing his own strikeout show here. And Jim Bagby steps up. He is a C batter. And uh, with an A, yeah, he struck out the Seacott, struck out the side in the eighth. He has not lost anything off that knuckleball. We go to the bottom of the eighth. The White Sox, if the White Sox could score just a run, just a run right here, that's, you know, pretty much going to be it. But we don't know because... Um, you know, they haven't done anything yet, but they are going to the top of the order with Eddie Collins and Jim Bagby is still out there. And, uh, with a C pitcher, he gets a swing and Eddie Collins is a batter A and he gets a ground out to third base. So... Ground out third base, one down, Chick Gandal up. Gandal is an, a B-plus batter against a C pitcher. He gets a walk if he's a CD or an F at walking people, but he isn't. So it's just going to be an out, and, uh, you know, it doesn't really, I mean, I'm not really, I don't care who it's an out to or whatever like that. So um, as far as, as long as we know that it's an out. And then Joe Jackson, the a plus batter against the C pitcher. He gets a, a walk if he's a D or an F, but he isn't, so it's an out. And we go to the top of the ninth. Top of the ninth, the Indians are going to be at the top of the order with Wombins Gas, who is a B batter. And um, 
the pitcher is um, an A, and he gets a swing, and the B batter gets a single. So the Indians have Wombins Gas on board, and he is a stealing. What is he? Let me check that. Because they may want to steal with him. A stealing A. So, I believe what we would do is we just flip another card and refer to the steal section, because he is going to try to do that. And an A, you can see, gets the stolen base. So, um, he steals second. And now you got Chapman up, and uh, you, you would have to say probably we would want to sacrifice here. I don't know if they've got the ratings for that top of the card so we're gonna we're gonna look at the sacrifice but let's see what his rating okay we're gonna pick the card and refer to the sacrifice section and the sacrifice section says K so he struck out trying to sacrifice so uh, Tris Beaker is up and uh, now they're going to have to let him hit because there's already one down. And Tris Speaker, by the way, is also a B-plus batter, so you would want to do that anyway. But he strikes out because uh, Seacott is an A pitcher. So he gets a, he strikes out the next two guys after Wombin Gas singles and steals second base. And then Elmer Smith is a B batter. The A pitcher just strikes him out. That's it. Seacock coming up big. And now the White Sox have a chance to win this game outright right here. It's a 1-1 game. Bottom of the ninth. Let's look at the score sheet to determine that. To take that look. There it is. And um, you got Happy Felsch leading off. So Happy Felsch is a, um, a C-plus batter. Against the C pitcher, it's going to be a swing and a C plus as a ground out to third base. That's five to three. We come up to Buck Weaver, and Buck Weaver is a B um, a B plus batter. The C pitcher gets a swing, and the B plus batter gets a single. So he is aboard with a single. Um, let's see what his stealing rating is. He is a steal A. So we're going to try that. Let's take a, let's take a, sh a shot at that. Steal A gets a stolen base. So he gets a, a single and a stolen base just like Wombin's Gas did. And Liebold is up. Um, Liebold is an A batter. And I can't afford to sacrifice because there's already an out. And against the C, he gets a swing. And an A gets a ground out to first base with an error check. The first baseman is an E, uh, is an error F. And so we're going to flip the next card and look at the error F section. And that is going to be an out. So uh, that moves him over to... Uh, third though and um, or no it doesn't no it's a fielder's choice so a fielder's choice would I think would have held him at second so it's all up to Risberg Risberg is a C batter against the C pitcher and that's going to be a swing and the C uh, batter gets a strikeout if he's a B, C, D or an F but it doesn't matter he's going to be out anyway um but let's see what he was at striking out, just so we know whether it was a strikeout. And he was struck out. So we're going to the top of the 10th. And um, I'm going to say that we're going to bring in a new pitcher for the White Sox. We're going to go with Bill James. And he is going to be pitching to the uh, Cleveland lineup that is going to start off with Larry Gardner, and Larry Gardner is a B-plus batter. And again, now he's going up against a C pitcher. No longer an A, and he gets a swing, and a B-plus gets a strikeout if he's a D or an F at striking out. Um, he isn't, so it's going to be an out, 
and uh, it would have been a double play, but it's really just an out. Um, and Steve O'Neill is up. He is a B plus batter against again a C pitcher. So a C pitcher allows a swing, and a B plus batter gets a strikeout if he's an F at striking out. He isn't, but it's going to be a regular. It's just going to be an out. And up steps Grainy. Grainy is a D batter. Um, and uh, is he a D batter? Wait a minute. Yeah, he is a D batter. And a C swing D batter gets a double if he's an A or a B at doubling. And uh, let's see. He is not. So no runs come in for the Indians again. Bill James comes on, does the job. Now we are also going to make a pitching change for Jim Bagby right here. It's going to be High Jasper. So High Jasper coming on for Jim Bigby. And if you're wondering how to spell it, it's just like high as in high there. So, um, High Jasper is a C pitcher with a walk rating of um, C and a strikeout F. And in, um, let's see, well, endurance uh, range, range fielding is an A and an F. So, A at range, F at uh, error. And so the C pitcher rating doesn't change. That's the same thing the White Sox have been going up against all game long. Ray Schalk is going to be the first batter, and he is a um, B batter against a C pitcher. is going to be a walk. So he's aboard. And with the pitcher up, Bill James, we're just going to do a sacrifice. Pick the card for the sacrifice, and that is going to be a C. If he's a C batter, it's a sac it's a it's a good sacrifice, but he um, is not, and so it's going to be um, it's going to be a fielder's choice, or a no, it's going to be a double play. It's a double play, so that is going to be a double play. And then we go nobody on, and we go to the batter being Collins here in the 10th. And he is an A batter. And against the C pitcher, he gets a walk if he is a walk rate or a walker of B, C, D, or an F. And uh, he is a C walking. So, yes, that is a walk. And now they have another, the White Sox have another man on. And that brings up Chick Gandel, who is a B-plus batter against the C pitcher. Ground out with an error check um, at second base. The second baseman um, error check is an F, so we're going to do the error check. F, F, error, F is going to be an error. And so that is going to be a one-base error. Um... We're going to go with that one base error. And now there's runners at first and second with two down and um, and Joe Jackson up. And Joe Jackson is an A-plus batter against a C pitcher. The C pitcher allows a swing. And that's going to be a double and score the run. And the White Sox win it all. <laughs> well, they win it anyway. Um and it would have been th three bases, too. So it, two runs scored on that double. And the White Sox ended up winning it in the uh, bottom of the 10th by the score of 3-1. to one. The uh, White Sox beat the Indians. 19-19 matchup by the score of 3-1. to one, Assuming I did this right, but I think I pretty much did it right. And so that is your final score, 1919 Black Sox 3 and the Indians 1.